Welcome back everyone to yet another Project Sekai Guide. Today we are doing something a bit different as we are coming up on our first ever Arc Ender event. This will be a general guide for the Arc Enders, but some of you might be wondering what is an Arc Ender? For some people it will be very obvious what I'm talking about, but for those who aren't into Project Sekai circles or follow Project Sekai news, it might be the first time you've heard of the Arc Ender ender term. Which is why I'm here to explain it so you are prepared and locked in when the first event drops. Arc Ender event, as the name implies, is the event that concludes the currently running story arc for each one of the five focused units of Project Sekai. This is a culmination of the year 2 stories for each of the units, as the Arc Ender events will bring a pivot point that changes the trajectory of the unit story going forward as we move into the third year of Project Sekai called Brand New World. We will get one Arc Ender event per unit, excluding virtual singers that will lead up to the third anniversary Hello Good Day. The first unit up is More More Jump, with the event step by step that will run from June 20th to June 28th. This is followed by Nightcore 25, with the event saying goodbye to my masked self that will run from July 11th to July 19th. After that we have Leonid, with the event connected by our stellar song that will run from July 21st to July 29th. This is then followed by Vivid Bad Squad with the event On Your Feet that will run from August 10th to August 19th. And finally we have Wonderland Showtime with the event Our Happy Ending that will run from August 21st to August 29th. The events will be quite densely packed, so it's good to be prepared for each one of these events as they do have something special to make them be worthy of the name Arc Ender. The gameplay of the Arc Ender events will be the same as any standard permanent marathon event. As with any unit event, you build your team of 5 characters of the correct attribute that matches the event. These include the original four characters for the unit and all virtual singers sharing the unit tag with the correct attribute. You then play standard lobbies that you would see during any marathon event where you're able to pick whichever song you want to play and you gain event points and event tokens as you play. There is no change to the calculation of event tokens and event points, so you will earn the rough estimate of an average marathon event during these Arc Ender events as well. No, the big change to Arc Ender events comes in the form of the special Arc Ender exchange shops. In the exchange shop, a few items will be replaced with new Arc Ender exclusive rewards instead. The reward goes as follows. The 5 small cans that are in the original event shop is replaced with 3 large cans that comes in the form of a single purchase that costs 5000 tokens. The 50 intermediate practice scores are exchanged with 20 practice scores of the advanced tier that cost 500 tokens per score for a grand total of 20,000 tokens for all 20 of them. Miracle gems have been upped from 20 to 40 pops, still costing the same 1000 tokens per gem, resulting in 40,000 tokens for the entire batch. Magical Cloth and Magical Thread have been bundled together to a single purchase where 300 cloth will cost you 10,000 tokens and 30 thread will also cost you 10,000 tokens. The Miracle Seeds have also been bundled together to a single purchase and the original amount have been upped from 10 to 30, costing 15,000 tokens in total. The 8 silver skill up scores have been replaced with 2 golden skill up scores instead and these cost 20,000 tokens each resulting in 40,000 tokens in total. The 100,000 gold has been replaced with 50,000 gold that you can buy 6 times. 50,000 golds will cost you 5,000 tokens each, resulting in a price of 30,000 tokens for 300,000 gold. Meanwhile, charms and gems have been completely removed from the exchange shop, with 2 star cards, 3 star cards, crystals, song vouchers, stamp vouchers, wish pieces, cover cards, 
and wish drops staying the same as they do in a standard marathon exchange shop. The prices in this shop is much higher but the rewards are also a bit more meaty and on average the shop is actually cheaper than it would have been during a standard event. But because of the very expensive prices for each of the items in the shop you do have to plan your token spending a bit more thoroughly for an Arkender event. But you might be wondering, what should I actually pick up? What's better in the Arkender shop and what is worth my token and playtime? And while there isn't a definitive answer what you should or should not pick up, we can make a generalized list of what's usually worth to pick in any scenario. Of course, I want to preface that this list won't be accurate for everyone, as the focus of your event exchange shop purchases should always depend on your account state. Some people are in the late game and some people are in the early game and these players will have vastly different requirements for what they should actually be getting. But not even every single late game player has the same struggle as another late game player and you should always make assessment depending on your account state on what you should actually purchase. But the generalized pick list is still a great way to start thinking about what you actually need. The first thing anyone should pick up no matter the player state is firstly the 3 star card followed by the 2 star card and then the 3 crystals. None of these 3 items have changed for the Arkender shop, retaining their original value and their original pricing. And the reason you should pick up these 3 items, no matter your game status, be a new player, an old player or a mid game player, is because cards are valuable. Cards are important for event building and each card you pick up through the exchange shop is a card that did not cost crystals as you didn't have to get it through the standard gacha. Cards are also important for things such as challenge shows that gives gems and wish pieces. More cards equal more points towards the character ranks which in turn makes the character stronger and grants you a lot of gems and different resources such as stamp cards and vocal cards. And the cards themselves grant gems through side stories. Cards are the backbone of the game and what event team building hinges on and therefore they are so important to pick up early even if you're a late game player. As for the free crystals, I don't think I have to argue why picking up 500 free crystals for one or two songs is a valuable thing to do. After this it becomes a bit more situational for each and every account but we still have a few that are highly advised you pick up early. Firstly I advise picking up the stamp voucher. The stamp voucher is unchanged change for the Arkender event, meaning it retains its original value from the standard marathon events. The stamp voucher is a very cheap and affordable way to get a free character rank point to any given character. This is especially good in the late game where character rank points are a lot harder to come by where you can easily tip a character over to something like 45 or 50 with the help of a stamp voucher as you pick up their stamp. Of course, it's also always fun to pick up the stamps and use in the virtual lives, even if our stamp booklets are getting a bit filled at this point if you are a late game player. This is followed by the wish pieces, who remains unchanged for the Ark and their shops just like our last couple of entries. Wish pieces are quite hard to come by as you most likely already know and getting the large quantities needed to upgrade higher level cards is quite tedious and difficult. That's why picking up the 100 available wish pieces from the exchange shop is such a valuable resource in your quest to upgrade all your 3 star cards to mastery rank 5 and upgrading 4 star cards for costume alternatives and event bonus. After this we get into the items that are a lot more dependent on your account state. As for mid to late game players, I highly advise picking up the seeds. The seeds are already a super important purchase through marathon and cheerful carnival events for mid to late game players. And in the Arkender shop the amount of seeds you get is tripled for only 5000 tokens more, meaning that it's highly advised you pick it up as soon as possible. And this is of course because seeds is a ultra rare resource needed in droves to upgrade your plants and your trees to mastery rank 10 or 15. For newer players and beginner players who aren't yet deep enough into the game to buy a lot of plants and trees, you might still consider picking up the seeds as you are going to need an insane amount to upgrade your trees and plants when you get there. For newer players, I do suggest going for the miracle gems if you do 
not want to go into the miracle seeds just yet. Miracle seeds have gotten its quantity upped for the Arkander shop but retains its original price. This means that there is more stock available but it will cost you the same as it would during a normal marathon event, meaning that you will have to spend 40,000 tokens to get all 200 miracle gems. But like I said, miracle gems are used for an insane amount of things such as getting your 3 star and 4 star car unlocked to their train state and also unlocking all side story 2 for 3 star cards and 4 star cards. And unlocking side stories and getting your cards to the practice state is quite expensive, meaning that you need a lot of miracle gems the more cards you get. After miracle seeds and miracle gems, I would suggest that everyone, new players, old players or mid game players pick up the gold. Gold retains its original pricing from a standard marathon event, but there is more of it and it's broken up into a new set of purchases that are smaller than the original ones we would see during a marathon event. And you need an insane amount of gold to level up all of the decorations available in the game for both characters, units and plants and trees. You will always be in need of more gold to get all of the decorations to level 15, hence why gold is still in the highly advised category of the exchange shop. And this remains true for new players as I think it's highly important for new players and also mid game players to really focus on getting decorations unlocked and leveled up as soon as possible. While trees and plants take more time because of the rarity of miracle seeds, the normal unit decorations and character decorations are highly highly important in increasing your talent level and getting S rank score and more talent bonus for your event teams. While talent isn't the main factor that affects how many tokens and event points you get per event, talent does play a role in how much you do get. So each level you get on a character decoration or unit decoration will be a power spike for the next event where said character or said unit is involved. This is why the gold is still in the highly advised category but still a little bit lower on the list as the other items are usually more important important or more in dire need of getting since you do get gold from each and every song you play. After the gold we get to the items that are a lot more situational where you really have to start looking at what you currently need for your account before you make a choice in what order you should pick up these items. Highest on the list in my opinion is the music vouchers when it comes to the situational items. If you're starting to run out on music vouchers it might be time to pick some up from the exchange shop to make sure that you can get every single song that releases in the music shop. Of course, if you're like me and you have 550 of them, they might not be as high of a priority to keep up with for the time being. And music vouchers are completely unchanged for the Arkander shop, meaning that they retain their original positioning as a situational item from marathon events. The next situational item I would pick up is for late game players only, and it is the wish drops. If you're currently planning on breaking open a character, unit, or plant decoration from level 10 to 11, I highly suggest that you look into getting the three wish drops available from the exchange shop. Why they are so situational though and why I'm saying they are only really needed for late game players is because of their price. Wish drops cost 50,000 tokens each and this is unchanged between marathon events and arcander events and there are three available in the shop. To break open a character decoration you need five of them. And to break open unit decorations and the plans you need 15 of them to get a single tree plant or unit decoration to level 11. The wish drops are absurdly expensive when it comes to the exchange rate and they are only for late game players who are currently looking into breaking open an item. If you're not currently in need of the wish drops and you are not looking to break open an item in the near future you should avoid these at the moment. Get everything else in the shop 
first before picking up the wish drops if you're not currently looking into breaking open an item. The third situational item, in my opinion, is the skill scores, which are also more lenient towards mid-game players and late-game players first and foremost, but are certainly valuable also for the early-game players. For the Arc Ender event, the eight silver scores have been replaced by two gold scores. These two gold scores cost 20,000 tokens each, which is quite a pricey purchase to do, but in buying both of them, you get a hundred more experience for the exact same price you would during a marathon event while picking up all eight of the silver scores. This means that you are getting a better deal, but the skill scores are still situational items because of their steep price and their limited usage. The gold scores are perfect to get your three star characters to talent level four or saving them to get your four star characters from talent level one to talent level two. But if you've already gotten all of your three star characters to skill level four and you have a lot of four stars at skill level two, you might not find as much value in these scorecards. So the skill up scores are quite situational because of their steep price, which makes it hard for for early game players or even mid game players to pick them up comfortably while late game players might not see as much use out of them since they might already have upgraded most of their 3 star cards and 4 star cards to a higher skill level. The last item in the situational category is the practice scores which I more highly advise early game player and mid game players pick up rather than late game players. The intermediate practice scores we see during normal marathon events are exchanged for the advanced variety variety, but the conversion rate is still the same between the two different items. During the Arc Ender, you pay 10,000 tokens for 20 advanced practice scores, which will give you 1 million card experience. While during a standard event, you will pay 5,000 tokens for 50 intermediate practice scores, which will result in 500,000 card experience. Why the practice scores are more of a situational item for early game and mid game players is because late game players usually have all of their cards leveled up to the max level already and have a lot of practice scores sitting waiting for new cards they might pull. Of course, if you're a late game player that is running low on resources, you can always pick these up to make it easier to level up your card, as it's always nice to be able to level up every single card you get as soon as possible to break open Side Story 2 or be able to use them in future events. But the practice scores are definitely lower priority for a late game player when they can pick up things such as wish drops, miracle seeds and skill up scores against an early game player who might be struggling with leveling up their cards and getting together good teams. But this is where we once again come to that situational aspect of this category. You have to look at your own account and see what is most valuable to you, as not every player struggles with the same thing or have the same situation. And this leaves us with the items I would consider luxury items or items you should pick up once you've picked up everything else. These don't come in any particular order, as I think you should pick them up in the order you yourself like them the most, seeing as they are luxury items. The first item that I would consider a luxury item is the cloth. For the Arc Enders, like I said, the cloth has been made into a single purchase for 10,000 tokens, which means that it is 5,000 tokens cheaper to get a bundle of 300 cloth, which will make you a single costume. So the cloth is a better deal during the Arc Ender events, as it is 5 5,000 tokens cheaper for the same amount of cloth as you would get during a normal marathon event, but cloth is still a luxury item since it doesn't really have the same use as the other items. In the early game, cloth might actually push you over a character rank threshold, such as character rank 10 giving you 300 crystal, which is high value at that point. In the late game, cloth becomes more of a commodity that really doesn't give us much anymore. To give an example from my own account, Count who is in late game, my Kaito requires six costumes to get a single character rank point, which would require me to pick up cloth from six different events to even get a single point towards my Kaito character rank. And of course, if you're someone who loves the 3D MVs and are really into the dress up aspect of Sekai, I will never tell you not to pick up the cloth. But purely out of a gameplay aspect, it is lower value and more luxurious 
Lucius to pick up the 300 cloth, then say something like miracle gems that could give you more crystals through unlocking a side story or give you a fully upgraded car by practicing it. The second luxurious item is the cover card, which is quite expensive and is totally unchanged between the Arc Enders and the Marathon events. The cover cards as always cost 30,000 tokens, which is quite expensive for a single character rank point. Hence, you shouldn't really pick up the cover cards if you aren't actually interested in getting one of the covers available for that unit, since the Arc Ender events are all unit focused. If you're really interested in getting, say, she hosts a Stella cover, then I think you should definitely go for the cover card, because the cover card is an easy way to unlock she hosts Stella cover. But if you aren't really into the band or the covers, or you already own all of the covers that you really want, you can definitely skip the cover card and get more of the other items available in the shop. Our final luxury item is the large energy drink, and this is because the large energy drink is much more expensive than the small energy drinks we see during standard marathon events. You get three large energy drinks for a single purchase of 5000 tokens, which will refill 30 energy, but during a standard marathon event you can pick up 10 small energy cans for a thousand, meaning that you're paying 2000 tokens more for 20 energy less if we look at the conversion rate. This means that the large energy drinks have a harder time paying themselves back and instead of looking at them as free energy or free tokens, you should instead look at them as a way to reserve energy for a later event. Still, it is a luxury item because it has a harder time paying itself back during the Arcanders than it would during a standard marathon event where you pick up the small energy cans instead. We also have a last final category, which I call don't. In this category, we only have threads, because threads, while seeming like a better purchase because it is the same amount you would get during a marathon event for 5000 tokens less, are still not valuable in the slightest. You need threads in a 1 to 10 ratio to cloth, and you will get an abundance of it, even if it doesn't seem like it currently when you're a new player. Thread will never be a problem when it comes to creating costumes, cloth will be. If you are in dire need of thread, I will not stop you from picking up this package, but it is not worth your tokens, as you get an abundance of threads from your daily live shows and co-op live rooms. I would actually say that it's better that if you've picked up every single other item from the shop to pick up raw gold rather than the thread, as you will be needing a lot more gold to get by in Sekai than you will ever need thread. Thread will overtake cloth at some point, it will happen, I promise you. Even if you're a new player struggling with getting thread, I promise you, you will be swimming in it and you will be lacking cloth, not thread. So in my opinion, to value your time, your playing and your tokens, don't pick up the threads, instead go down the list and make sure you've picked up everything else first. But that is the full list of what you should pick up of the Arcander shop and in what order you should do so. Once again, this is just a generalization and you should not follow this blindly. Instead, you should look at your current account state and what you actually need. This list is to help you if you feel unsure in what order you should pick up items and what is actually important. But still, the most important thing in the long run is how your account looks at the moment. Though I will say that I will not change my mind that you should always pick up the 2 star, the 3 star and the crystals the first thing you do as those are the most integral part of any marathon and limited event shop. And the most important thing in Project Sekai is that you have fun, so if you wanna go for the cloth first because you love watching 3D MVs, I would never stop you from doing so as it is your account and your experience and this list is more so to get value on each of the items and in what order you should pick them up if you wanna be 
citation mark around this word, optimal. But with that, I do think I've ran down what you can expect from an Arc Ender event and how you should handle the event exchange shop, seeing as it is a bit more bulky of a shop and will require a bit more time to clear out the entire shop selection. But if you still have any questions about the Arc Ender events and the Arc Ender event exchange shop, you can always ask down in the comments as my community has a lot of knowledgeable people and also I read every single comment and reply to most of them. Alternatively, if you have questions and you don't want to ask in the YouTube comments, you can always join the official Project Sekai Discord where there are a ton of helpful people and you can find it via the official Reddit or via Google. But I also want to hear, are you excited for the Arc Ender events and which arc has been your favorite during year two of Project Sekai? Once again, I read every single comment and I do love interacting with all of you guys because without you, I would have nothing and talking to people from the community is always a blessing. And while you're down there, please make sure that you're subscribed, have rung the bell, liked the video and shared it with a friend who might not know about the ARC and their experience. I am very close to hitting 10,000 subscribers and if we could hit it before my first anniversary as a YouTuber, that would be actually exhilarating. I'm also looking into making a lot more general guides for Project Sekai and I would love to hear what you actually want to know more about. But with that, I am thanking you for making it to the end of the video. I hope I have clarified what an Arc Ender event actually is. I will not keep you here any longer. Let's get out of here for now.